Hello there, my name is the Matt Enthusiast, and you're listening to the Nothing But Bricks podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. This is the 20th episode of the Nothing But Bricks podcast, so I guess I'll start off the episode by talking a bit about the future of this podcast, because I feel like this is kind of a pivotal moment, hopefully for the podcast, to the point where I'm able to interview guests again, which is really cool. And I have already actually interviewed someone, and the podcast is ready and edited. It's ready to to go up. So I just thought I'd record this podcast episode to uh, kind of explain my plan going forward for this podcast. And my excitement going forward for this podcast. So talking about interviewing people again, um, I, I guess I didn't know if it would be something that would be possible until I went on Jussac Pat's ALP podcast channel and uh, we just chatted, and as some of you may know, I do have a chronic illness that it kind of affects my energy levels and can make having conversations with people a lot more difficult to do when your brain is not really cognitively able to take in what people are saying or you forget what you're saying, lose your train of thought. And um, it can be quite uh, frustrating. It has been has been quite frustrating. Um, but I am pleased to announce that I am giving interviews a try again. And so far, they seem to be going quite well. Like I said, I've interviewed one person so far, but I have also gone on the ALP podcast and been interviewed and both of those instances have been smooth sailing really so I I have curated a, a list of guests and ideas for going forward with the podcast because I'm just so excited that I can come back to it now Another thing you might notice by listening to this is the change in audio quality since the last episode, and that is because I have my Blue Snowball microphone set up again, which is really cool. I would have been using my shotgun microphone before that because I've also been getting back into voice acting, which I will get to later. But yeah, it's it's been really cool to be able to dip my toes back in the, the water a bit and, and uh, talk to people again. Not that I haven't been talking to people, but just like talk to brick filmers again and to do what I'm passionate about again. It has been just really fun. It, it's been so wholesome to see that everybody's so understanding of everything and supportive and I I just cannot thank you guys enough for how patient y'all have been. I don't think I've I've gotten any questions that have had animosity behind them I guess of you know when's the next podcast episode or anything. It's really only been people asking me as an individual how I'm doing health-wise because I did talk about my health on the podcast. When I initially started interacting more with people in the Berg Filming community on Discord and things like that, people were saying... I was, I was surprised, honestly, to, to see how many people listen to the podcast because it, it kind of, to be honest, when I do the solo episodes, it does kind of feel like I'm just talking into a void sometimes and that there isn't actually like another person on the other end of this exchange and it helped me for a long time to be able to have that creative outlet. I, I feel like I, I always talk about how or at least more more so lately, I've, I've talked about how important 
creative outlets have have been for me and and how important creative outlets are for people in general but um it's just been so cool to to see that that other people care about not just me as a person but like what i'm creating i guess it should have been the other way around the way i, I structured that sentence but uh it it's cool that people care about what i'm making and uh that they look forward to the things that i'm creating also because i really didn't think that was the case for a while when making the the more recent podcast episodes just because i haven't been talking with people in the community as much if at all and and just being able to do that again has given me that sense of like belonging in the community again but i just want to say thank you to to everyone who listens and to everybody who has uh messaged me on discord or instagram or twitter or whatever kind of interaction that i've had with anybody in in the brick filming community within the last six months or so or just in general the fact that people have been like supporting my stuff continuously i i think is really cool like they haven't uh given up on uh waiting for uploads and things it, it goes back to what i was saying i think in the last episode about just that sense of community it it really keeps me keeps me going sometimes so I, I really do appreciate it and now i will get to the the meat of the podcast so i guess the first thing is yeah interviewing people again has been incredible and if you if there's anyone in particular that you think i should interview i'm down to talk to anyone really anyone who's a brick filmer or a lego enthusiast those are the only real requirements uh for coming on the podcast and also just i guess picking picking the right people uh which you will soon see in the upcoming podcast episode i'm i'm so excited to see everybody's response to the interviews again and to do the interviews again it's just this feeling of like elation because i feel like like with the creative outlets thing that i was talking about it it just really makes me feel like elated when i get to actually come back to creating things that i really am passionate about so the interview stuff is going to be a hopefully recurring thing going forward now there will be i'm hoping i can't make any concrete promises because like i mentioned i do have the illness but um it is improving which is good so who knows but i am hoping to starting this wednesday well as you're listening to this it's wednesday if you're listening to this episode on the day it came out but starting next wednesday would be the first interview episode that will be released and then every wednesday afterwards there will be a new interview or a new episode at least so i will either record a solo episode by my lonesome or i will have an interview ready and lined up i will say for the first four weeks after this assuming everything goes okay i will have four interviews coming up one of which has already been recorded so that is awesome and yeah i'm really excited i would love to interview anyone and everyone in the community i i think my main goal i don't know if i ever actually said it on the podcast before but my main goal when recording these episodes has always kind of been to just kind of shine a light on this community that i'm part of and passionate about and this craft of brick filming and just that lego on a surface level to some people can seem like just a toy or a product you know but when you dig a bit deeper and 
actually talk to individuals who love it to the point where they're they're willing to talk to me about it on a podcast it's like when you really dig deeper it's a lot more than just a toy or a product it's it means so much to so many people myself included and i really just want to highlight that with these interviews and um i hope that i have done a good job of that so far but you know everybody's different and been thinking about the previous interviews and now doing this interview it's it's made me think like you never know what you're gonna get out of the interview because everybody is so unique when you're talking with them and everybody has different ways of like responding to things which is I mean obviously but like I just mean in the sense that some people give long-winded explanations to every question and then some people give yes or no answers so and then there's like a, a middle ground to that too so you never know what you're gonna get and I feel like you never know what kind of people you're gonna meet and I think each one that I've posted anyway has highlighted um, that the Lego community is is not just you know people playing with toys but but like connecting with one another through this thing that they connect with uh, and not just the Lego community but the brick film community especially I think the fact that there's so much more to brick filming it is also filmmaking and storytelling which i guess mocks also can fall under storytelling depending on the intent behind the mock and you know everybody has their own individual life story in regards to how lego ties into their lives and i think it's so cool to hear those stories and i think sharing those stories and you know getting to interview that that's the other thing is like everyone's story is so different like it's it's this one product that brings everyone together but then the background of how that came to be of like everybody kind of gathering in the same place it's always different for every person it's incredible and i really love doing the interviews they're so much fun and it's for someone who getting a bit personal here but for someone who has social anxiety you know interviewing people has really made me especially when it comes to something that i'm passionate about it's really made me push myself outside of my comfort zone and brick filming and lego you know the discovery of that and the passion for that has allowed me to do that and i think that's incredible you know i will be forever indebted to this product sounds like i'm talking about drugs or something but like it's literally just just lego like <laughs> i've talked to people who sometimes say you know oh it's not that deep which i get you know some people it's not that deep and that's okay because it's unique for each person like the level to which there is a connection there to lego and brick filming and the nostalgia behind it if you've been doing it for a long time the sentimental value to owning a small lego set or a few bits of lego or like being able to look back at your old brick films that you made as a kid and and just kind of remembering the simpler times i think for a lot of people that i've i've talked with that that has been kind of the case with their experience but they they obviously have their own ways of talking about it and wording things and also their own unique examples and stories of how that fits into their life yeah just hearing that um so many other people are also so passionate about this thing is incredible too because it is this kind of validation that 
keeps me wanting to create things within the realm of brick filming and Lego more and more because it's it's like building Lego with someone else. Uh, you put down a block and then somebody else puts one down too and then you kind of just keep building it. You don't really know what you're building but you keep going and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and the enjoyment for it too, for, at least for me, it becomes more and more fulfilling as time goes on, especially because I was kind of forced to take a step back from it for so long that now that I'm back in the realm of thinking about interviews again, I just feel like it's cool. But yeah, going back to what I was hinting at earlier that I would talk about, um, I am voice acting again in projects and things. I know in, in the last few episodes of the podcast, especially, my my voice was pretty um, pretty beaten up sounding, uh, pretty, pretty rough, um, pretty hoarse, and it's not uh, by any means normal again. I guess it's just kind of flat now because it's hard to bring energy to like voice acting. You don't really have physical energy in your body, which has been an interesting challenge. But, uh, you know, we, we keep going, we keep going. The voice acting has been a lot of fun. Whatever role I'm given or ask if I can do this particular role for this particular person, I'm just going to give it my all because it's a lot of fun and I don't want to let the person down. I, you might have seen, if you go to my YouTube page, I have a few playlists, one of them being my cameos playlist, which is just a bunch of videos that I feature in. But yeah, if you go to that playlist, you'll notice that it has been recently updated with some new videos by some awesome Berg filmers. I have met a lot of new cool brick filmers and discovered a lot of new cool creators through voice acting in their projects and I think that you should go check that playlist out because the brick filmers that are in it deserve loads of attention so definitely go check them out but yeah if you want me to voice act in something I can and all you have to do is just message me on any social media it's all the met enthusiast and i will get back to you because i love voice acting it's so much fun when i started out voice acting back in 2020 i i would have had uh m more of like an anxious kind of feeling around it not that i'm not like critical of myself when doing it but when I started out it was like oh I'm new to this you know I, I'm worried that this won't be good whenever you start anything you're gonna look back at it after like honing that skill and realize I wasn't very good at that point in time at this thing but you know I'm glad I started it and I'm glad that I kept going with it but yeah I feel like my voice acting has really improved since I would have been voice acting for people before. If you are interested in me voice acting in your projects, I'd be happy to send a demo reel of things I've already voice acted in or like different lines that I've done for random stuff that I just kind of never really got to use for anything else. I just threw them all into a little demo reel and Obviously, I was careful with the lines that I picked to kind of show my range, uh, while also, not that it's much of a range, but you'll see when, when you see the demo reel, if I send it to you, if you reach out to me. Anyways, voice acting is also cool because I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I feel like I always have to be doing something productive and if it's something along the avenue of like brick filming or Lego, then a voice acting for brick films, uh, I feel like is like a perfect way of like telling myself that I've been productive because I've voice acted in stuff. And like when I'm not able to interview people or when I wasn't able to interview people. And if that happens in the future, hopefully it won't. But if I'm still able to voice act in stuff, it's like, well, I'm still able to be 
involved in brick film related stuff so that's cool and it, it just kind of keeps me keeps me going with motivation especially seeing other people's projects by the end of it and getting a little insight into behind the scenes on their projects that's always really cool because it reminds me that like wow a person really spent this much time and effort on this one project and I'm just over here existing while they're doing that. That's wild. It's just so cool. I know that I'm that I've made my own brick films before, but like, yeah, I guess just appreciating how much work has been put into these projects has also made me think about my own work ethic and it it really helps with motivation for me, which has been great. Yeah, I I'd, I'd be happy to voice act in whatever project. The only only caveat to that I will say is profanity wise I'm I'm not too comfortable with profanity just because I just don't like saying it it it's it's not it kind of takes the fun out of voice acting a little bit sometimes but if there is a role that I really want that has a bit of profanity I, I might I might do it but yeah just reach out to me on discord or twitter or i guess x whatever you want to call it but uh yeah twitter instagram discord uh youtube comment section you can email me the met enthusiast at gmail.com yeah i am looking forward to hearing from you guys if you do choose me to do any kind of role in any kind of project but moving on i think i've talked enough about about my voice acting escapades now but um yeah i also wanted to just thank you guys for the support on the last few videos since brick film day really it's been an amazing amount of support and just wanted to say thank you for that i forgot to say that in the beginning but the kermit video i was really happy that I was able to contribute to, to Brick Film Day with something and then after I did that video I did the test video obviously the, the mouth animation test that you would have seen at the start of this podcast if you are watching on video on YouTube and I'm really happy with both videos I think they came out pretty much how I was envisioning and making them was some of the most fun that I have had in a very long time because as you all know I, I had to take a break from brick filming as well as podcasting for a while which was pretty gut-wrenching but I was able to make videos again and I t just remembered I don't know how this slipped my mind but I recently bought dragon frame and the logitech c920 webcam and uh the first video i made with it was the mouth animation video which was really fun it's cool to try out new software and yeah it's just been an absolute hoot to get to try and use it and figure it out and uh the only obstacle i guess was trying to figure out as all c920 webcam owners know there there are the blue lights that shine from the webcam and onto your mini figures which isn't great so i you know luckily the community on discord in i think it was the bricks and motion server which is a very great server by the way i'd recommend you you go check it out but yeah they, they i just asked like how do i fix this problem um because i i know that uh it's kind of standard for brick filmers to use that webcam it's a very commonly used webcam for brick filmers and animators so i just asked and uh so i got black tape long story short and uh covered over the the blue lights on the, the webcam and now it is ready to be used in whatever I choose to use it in so I'm really excited with the brick filming stuff going forward and yeah trying out Dragon Frame for the first time was 
was interesting as well because I wasn't sure if it was going to be similar to the Adobe software where it takes a lot of RAM on your computer to use and it can be a whole headache, the whole Adobe stuff sometimes because it doesn't work well with laptops sometimes, just sometimes. But since I have swapped laptops to a MacBook instead of a HP laptop that I used to use, the issues with things like crashing and performance and things like that have really diminished. So, I, well, the performance has gotten better, but the crashing and things like that has diminished. Yeah, the, the new MacBook has been great. I really enjoy it. So yeah, I guess this is kind of like the complete opposite of what I was saying in the last episode of the podcast with back to basics and all that because I've got Dragon Frame now and, and it's like that's so far from the basics that you could possibly be. Last time I would have been talking about how I was using Stop Motion Studio on my phone to make the Kermit video and now I'm talking about how I used Dragon Frame and the C920 webcam to make my mouth animation video, which again played at the start of this podcast episode. If you wouldn't have seen the test on its, on its own, it played at the start of this, so you've probably seen it if you're watching on YouTube, but if you're listening on audio, uh, I'd, I'd recommend going to the YouTube channel and checking it out to, to get the full idea of what I'm talking about, but um, it's basically just a short animation of my new sig fig talking with a synced up mouth animation. I used the mouth presets from Onbeat Man's uh, Patreon, which I highly recommend if anyone's going to be using mouth presets instead of just like black bars for like the mouths moving. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I think there's a real unique charm to that kind of mouth animation. But if you do want to kind of up it to the next level and start using the presets, I would recommend on Beatman's presets because they're very easy to use and it's very easy to follow his tutorial in After Effects and all that, so I highly recommend checking out his Patreon if you haven't for those specific presets. Uh, he has the male mouth, or just the normal normal kind of flat mouth, and then the, the female mouth as well, so you can check both of those out. And by the way, I put out a minifigure review. It's my most recent video apart from this one, obviously, but yeah, thanks for the response on that too. That, that was cool. That, that was originally intended to go with a podcast episode that I was preparing for Brick Film Day, but then I recorded the podcast episode and then I was going to have the review segment at the end and I just ran out of time to do the review because different things got in the way but then something very interesting happened which led to the video that you saw. So I was originally going to just review the minifigure that I was sent, the old design in that video which you can go and see what the minifigures look like by just checking out the video on my youtube if you haven't seen it already just for a bit of frame of reference context and all that but um yeah i, I was going to just review the first design but when i did finally go to record the review i, I recorded the full review and then realized that the frame of reference that I was using to talk about the minifigure with was the images of the updated version of the minifigure on their website, the new minifigure, which I also show and review in the new video. So I couldn't use the review for the podcast on Brick Film Day, so I couldn't put the podcast out because I just felt like it didn't really work on its own. It needed more. Yeah, I, I really wanted that review to be part of a podcast because the other reviews were also part of a podcast in the past. But then I just thought, you know, this would be a really interesting thing to review just on its own because by the time I had 
realize that I had written a script for the wrong minifigure, I reached out to minifigs.me and kind of asked them, like, why is the design different? Like, what happened, basically? And they explained that uh, they just updated the design. So then I naturally thought, why not review both? So then that kind of got me thinking, this is a really interesting opportunity here because why not compare the two minifigures side by side in one video? So I just thought, I have the two minifigures, I bought the second min brand new Daredevil minifigure just for the sake of this review, I, I'm just going to put it up on YouTube. And the response has been amazing. I really did not expect to get the amount of positive feedback that I did. Uh, so thank you for that. It was really fun to do, and it was a it was a really like crazy discovery to just discover that they had updated the design, so I could then have this cool double whammy type review comparing the two. It's just it's cool. Yeah, huge thanks to Minifigs.me again for sending out the uh, old Daredevil design. I think it was back in 2021 that they sent it to me. I'm really sorry that I didn't get to it sooner. I feel like the, the previous times that I've recorded solo podcast episodes, it was uh, never really to say like, oh, I'm back for good. It, like I, I made it clear. I, feel, I hope I made it clear that I'm, I was only back for for those episodes momentarily like it was only those episodes and then I was gone again because that was all I could make at the time and now I feel like having this backlog of interviews prepared I can now say that I am going to be releasing regular episodes again I don't know for how long um, but I will try to make it a regular thing now so I'm really excited about it and uh, I will now move on to answering the questions that I asked you guys to send me on my Instagram story uh, if you want to be part of the next Q&A segment of, of any given podcast you can follow my instagram and i'll post whenever i'm looking for questions or or my twitter but uh i i don't really use twitter that much so it, it would mainly be instagram that i'd be looking for questions on starting with the first question from nc film productions they said if you could form a music band what kind of music and musicians would you like to have? Um, you know, it's funny that music is mentioned here because I will get to the question itself, like the, the music forming a band type thing in, in a second, but it did remind me that I have recently got into a little bit of music production type stuff. I was... So I'd been sitting with this instrumental for a long time, and by long time I mean like a couple of weeks, um, but I'd been sitting with this instrumental that I made that I really liked, and I, I couldn't really figure out what lyrics to put with it, because I'm very new to the, the music making scene, and I never really found the time to just like put some time aside to write some lyrics. So I, I never really figured it out, but I'm thinking now, why not just release it as like the instrumental track? And if people like it, I can make more instrumental tracks and you guys can use it in your brick films and videos as background music. And I can use it in my brick films and videos as background music. And it's a mutually beneficial exchange of you know both both parties enjoying a bit of music but yet to answer the the question by nc film productions uh on instagram if you could form a music band what kind of music and musicians would you like to have um if i could form a band 
that's an interesting one because like I mentioned I I am uh very much a beginner when it comes to music I've never really played any instruments before except when I was younger I went to guitar lessons for like a year and I don't really remember much from them because I was like four or five and now I, I'm a self-taught ukulele player so um don't worry, there's no ukulele in the instrumental that I was talking about earlier for using in brick films and things like that. I, I feel like that wouldn't really fit a brick film, a ukulele song, but I don't know. It depends on the brick film. But yeah, I, I've been messing around with Garage Band a little bit, and I'm really happy with the track that I've made, so I will leave a link to it in the description, and you guys can let me know what you think. Is it good? Is it bad? Do you want me to keep making, you know, instrumental tracks for, for brick films and for just like, just like royalty free tracks that can be used in videos or whatever? And is there any specific kind of tone that you're hoping I can make an instrumental track around? You know, you can message me about that on Instagram, Discord, Twitter, all that stuff as well. But uh, going back to the question, I'm, I'm so sorry for dodging the question so many times. Not dodging, but just forgetting to answer. What kind of music... I guess the kind of music I would make... Hmm. If I was in a band, the kind of music I would make... Probably indie pop style music. I really like um, Cave Town's music and... This might be a controversial one, but Oliver Tree, I, I really like his music. I have learned recently that not many people like his music. Uh, I don't really see why, but I personally love his his album, Ugly is Beautiful, and I think yeah, it just never gets old for me. So that that kind of that kind of vibe, I think, would be. I guess Oliver Tree and Cave Town are kind of polar opposites in terms of how they're perceived, in terms of them as individuals. But I guess when it comes to their music, there's a bit of overlap in terms of just the genre that they're in and, and the kind of stuff that they make. It's a little similar sometimes. So yeah, the, to answer the question of what kind of music I would make in a band, I guess indie pop. I I wouldn't be the singer though, that, that that's for sure. Um, I would only be the maybe ukulele player. <laughs> uh... I, I also used to, I, I was good with the tambourine back when I was in a, a choir singing group. I, I was good with the tambourine, so maybe the, the tambourine. But I guess just like the production end of things and um, the behind the scenes kind of producing music, I'd, I'd probably be like the mixer, like everyone would record their their audio and their instruments and then I'd like mix it all together. I feel like I've got a, a bit of a handle on mixing audio at this point. I am still learning how to mess around with uh, music in GarageBand so take that with a pinch of salt. Um, but musicians I would like to have, I think Brian May, the, the guitar player for Queen, I think it would be pretty cool if he if he was uh, uh, the guitar player, that, that would be quite cool. Other musicians for vocals, I have a few family members that are pretty good singers. I guess other musicians, yeah, family members, I would probably ask them to do vocals and stuff uh, if I did start a band or anything. Yeah, musicians though, like actual like n notable musicians, I guess. Like I said, I, I'm a big fan of Cave Town. It, it would be cool to, uh, in in an imaginary, in, in a parallel universe, like start a band with uh, with them. That that would be cool. Okay, so thank you for that question. NC Film Productions. That was a, a lot of fun to kind of think about hypotheticals and and things like that. And uh, yeah, I'll move on to the next question now from Josac Pat. He asks, "What's your favorite?" games console. Um, I was thinking about this because 
I read the question beforehand and it got me thinking, you know, the Xbox 360 is, is really not the the ones with the red ring of death, but the, the ones that came out after that that were actually good. Um, <laughs> the, you know, those, like the nostalgia with with that, I think it, it, it puts it up there for me as like one of the best consoles of all time. And we still have it in, in the house and uh, me and my siblings still get loads of use out of the xbox 360 and have loads of games on it yeah it's 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 so much fun I, I love playing uh dishonored on it because dishonored is is one of my favorite games it's a very simple kind of game uh and there's a lot more there are a lot of better games out there but i guess for the xbox 360 in particular i love playing dishonored on it because it just reminds me of like a particular era of gaming i guess with the graphics and the uh just kind of the the nostalgia too of, of playing it again so yeah i would say the xbox 360 is definitely up there as one of my favorite consoles but yeah i i guess as well i recently got a ps5 and i have been playing a couple games on that and it has been a lot of fun so I would say that that is also up there in terms of like what it's capable of. I, I think it's just quite an incredible console as well as the PS4. I, th I think they're both really great consoles and of course the Wii as well I think is, is a great console for nostalgia purposes too. Um, yeah, those would be my favorites anyway. And, the, and then I guess the 3DS for nostalgia purposes too. I'd, I'd throw that one in there. So moving on to the final question from Leaf Animations. They said, who inspired you to make brick films? You know, that's an interesting one because I feel like I had a bit of a, I had an initial inspiration with Forest Fires videos back in the day of like the old Batman stuff. Me and my siblings would really bond over just watching his videos and laughing at them at at the absurdity and the absurdist humor yeah and i i still think that the lego batman videos from that era are very special um at least to me because because of that and also just like the nostalgia of what would be there for sure and a lot of other old brick films from back in the day but then when I kind of started out, it would have been like the forest fire type videos that introduced me to the concept of brick filming, but it, it wouldn't have been until mid to late 2019, I discovered Ed Bounds videos. And at that point I, I was making videos, but I didn't know how to get better at them. And I, I also was only really making like short fight scenes or 30 second long clips that I didn't really have any idea of the direction of where I wanted them to go. I Like I didn't really know what I was doing, I was just kind of messing around and then hoping for views, which obviously isn't going to work. Well, I mean it can work, who knows, but it didn't for me at least, which uh, is probably a good thing because it made me realize you know i might as well put work into this if it's gonna get the same amount of views anyway and then i also just did it because i it made me love brick filming just for the sake of brick filming as opposed to doing it for views i think and it, it made me seeing batman's building brawl that was my kind of first introduction to Ed Bound's videos and seeing that it inspired me to make my own longer form animation and September 2019 to January 2020 I was storyboarding, writing the script, getting the voice actors together and everything, getting all the voice lines and then January 5th I think of 2020 I started making the video started animating and within that time of 
the five months that it then took me to animate because I finished on the 1st of May 2020 and then uploaded it on the 2nd of May 2020 but within that time I, I learned so much about animation and learning to love the process as opposed to just like pumping out videos for the sake of it like I never really knew what the driving force behind it before was other than views and Ed Bounds videos just kind of showed me that you can make really cool stuff and still get the views and uh, the appreciation and so that's what made me want to make longer form brick films I guess and uh, to date that brick film is still the longest video I've ever made and I, I haven't watched it in a very long time. I will say the the part that I do like about it is the the fight scene between Spider-Man and Carnage at the end. I guess I'd have to watch back the, the video and make sure that that's still the case but um, I'm pretty sure that, that, that that's the bit that I like about it which is kind of ironic that uh, the bit that I like is a fight scene that, and that was what I was kind of doing already before but I guess it makes sense but yeah it was just I guess by that point in the video I had made pretty much the majority of the video by that point so I had learned so much going into that fight scene and uh, like a lot about animation so I was able to use those skills to make the fight scene look somewhat good I, I think and it I think it's still some of the best fight choreography type stuff that I've done but anyways enough about that video I, I another thing that inspired me to that kind of inspired me and also introduced me to stop motion as a whole was Wallace and Gromit and um Postman Pat because when I was really young I I would have watched Postman Pat and I didn't actually know that that was stop motion at the time but now I, I know that the episodes I was watching were made using stop motion but yeah Wallace and Gromit had a very distinct kind of style to it and I just was drawn to it from a very young age and still really love Wallace and Gromit so I feel like that was also a huge inspiration as well to to see Aardman the, the, st the studio behind Wallace and Gromit Aardman's like I, I think I have a DVD that I used to watch when I was younger of Wallace and Gromit and it has like bonus content of like behind the scenes like how they made the figurines and stuff like that and it, it was all really cool to see and uh yeah I was blown away by the idea that stop motion was a thing but it it was watching that show that introduced me to this whole world of animating with a physical thing as opposed to 2d animation but yeah it was it was Wallace and Gromit that introduced me to it and then Forest Fires videos that made me realize it could be done with Lego and then when I was 11 I started making my own videos and they obviously weren't the best and up until I started the longer form project that was inspired by Ed Bounds videos I wasn't really improving in terms of my animation skills and things like that but I guess I had become more and more aware of the community as that time went on but yeah I guess as well Mind Game Studios at the time while I was making The Devil and Carnage the name of the, the long form uh, video I was making he was also doing the Quarantine Days series during the initial lockdowns of the pandemic and I thought I'd take part in that too so I, I did a short sketch called Boomerang Time and sent it in and 
it was put in the video and I thought that was really cool and that kind of introduced me to a whole bunch of other creators in the sense that it made me realize there's a whole community here of people who also make videos at varying skill levels and I fit into this community because I'm doing this thing and I don't necessarily have to be the best at it but as long as I can work towards that the community can help me do that and I feel like that's exactly what's happened since and even if I didn't know that going into it as a conscious choice I uh, it was still what was enticing to me to um to see all these other people who were at the same kind of level that I was and also wanting to get better at brick filming and seeing the, the the level that Edbound was at with Batman's building brawl and things. Obviously he's come on leaps and bounds in terms of skill level and production quality and everything since then. But seeing that kind of quality in animation while also being able to tell a cohesive story in a comedic way with fun voice acting and just every element of it was so cool and new to me I feel like because I didn't really I didn't take in the the behind the scenes elements what, like what went into the forest fire videos but then seeing Edbound's stuff more as I got older and saw Edbound's stuff it, it made me realize that you know I could start doing that kind of stuff and making my videos more complex and telling stories that I want to tell but just with brick filming and I think I still kind of get that kind of motivation from seeing Ed Bones work because it's so unique I think uh, obviously the Ed Bound style of video is a very prominent thing in the brick filming community now because Edbound is a prominent figure in the brick filming community, but obviously he's Edbound, so he started the style. So seeing his videos is always a reminder that, hey, this is how I got into this again, like got back into this. And this is how I really found my footing in this community. I could go on, but it has been quite a while now and I think I will leave this episode here. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, please consider subscribing, turning the notifications on so that you don't miss the interviews when they come out within the next few Wednesdays and beyond, hopefully. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for all the patience and support and kindness and I hope you all have a great rest of your day or evening or night whatever time you're listening to this podcast. This was definitely much longer than any other solo episode that I've done before but I guess I have had a lot to say recently and I'm just very excited with the future of the channel so Thanks so much for listening, and I will see you in the next episode of the podcast next week. Goodbye.